Almost 12 months ago, I sold my Fujifilm X-T3 for the Sony Alpha 7 Mark IV. I took a Sony 10,000 feet high into the mountains, I used the Sony for some street photography, used the Sony in a studio, used the Sony Alpha 7 Mark IV at any occasion I could. And now I think it's a good time to talk about my experience with the Sony Alpha 7 Mark IV. Let's start off with the general handling and the menu settings of the Sony Alpha 7 Mark IV. Coming from a smaller camera brand, from a size wise, such as like a Fujifilm X-T3 down to the Sony Alpha 7 Mark IV, there was of course quite a bit of learning curve going. You needed to relearn a completely new menu of the Sony Alpha 7 Mark IV, but also I thought that I would miss all my dials I had available on my Fujifilm X-T3 when coming down to the Sony. But after a while I got used to the Sony Sony menu found a suitable way how to set up the Sony Alpha 7 Mark IV to make it more suitable for my style of shooting. I do need to confess that I don't miss the dials on top of it, I don't miss on every single lens aperturing either anymore. So overall the handling, having a bit of a bigger grip, having a bit of more weight of a camera, a bigger setup. I found this quite nice, having a bit more weight, having a bigger camera setup. It's just suited my style of shooting a bit more. I always preferred and liked a bit of heavier camera setup. When a new camera comes out, there's one thing everyone complains about it, and that's overheating. I personally need to say that I didn't have many situations where I had problems that the Sony R47 Mark IV did overheat and I never had the situation where the Sony R47 Mark IV needed to shut down because of overheating. You can change the heating menu setup in a camera, set it to high and the camera will last longer. Even though if the camera body gets slightly warm, the camera won't shut down as quick without the setting. So overall speaking, for my style of shooting, having the camera stationary on a tripod for do some head talking shots, a bit of run and gun flogging, I never did run into the situation that the Sony did overheat or did shut down when overheating. You could feel a bit of heat coming through the hand grip or at the camera body, but overall it was more than manageable and I didn't have any issues in this regards. One thing I definitely underestimated and that's basically coming from a Fujifilm X-T3, the autofocus was mediocre. In my personal case and how I shoot, and I shoot slower stuff, I shoot some portraits, I do travel photography, street photography, I was more than happy with the autofocus of a Fujifilm X-T3 and I could manage the autofocus to make it work for my needs. But when you're actually coming down to an autofocus system such as like a Sony Alpha 7 Mark IV and you're having an autofocus system which is twice, at least twice as fast as what you are used to, it's actually mind blowing. It was such a incredible experience almost, I wanna say, because if you're not used to it, it's hard to explain what it's like having a proper fast autofocus system. Right now in video, it's so reliable. I can move around without any issues and it just tracks me and sticks on me without any issues. So coming actually from a autofocus system, which is slightly slower, slightly less reliable, to an autofocus system, which is reliable, which is fast, which is accurate, it's fantastic and it's such a, it's two worlds basically. The only time when I had a bit of issues with the Sony Alpha 7 Mark IV was when I shot once or twice in the studio. I had the Godox trigger mounted on top of the Sony Alpha 7 Mark IV to trigger my 280-200 and for whatever reason the camera didn't want to focus briefly. I needed to turn away with the camera, refocus somewhere completely else, remove towards my model and then I could focus on her face. Even with the eye autofocus, it just didn't want to focus in this moment. I don't know because it was maybe the trigger was a bit loose on the camera or the camera just did struggle in this moment. It happened twice to me. So overall speaking, the autofocus coming from a slower system down to a faster autofocus system, it's literally incredible and I can recommend to everyone to at least give it a try to see the difference, to actually understand what it's like to have a faster, better, more reliable autofocus system. When it comes down to image quality, and it really doesn't matter if it's a Sony Alpha 7 Mark IV or the Fujifilm X-T3, 
Canon, Nikon, Lumix, Panasonic, Hasselblad, you name a camera brand, every single camera which came out over the last five to 10 years will create fantastic looking images. It also doesn't matter if it's APS-C or full frame sensor. The image quality there, look at your smartphone nowadays, you get fantastic images out of it. So there's no surprise that the image quality with the Sony Alpha 7 Mark IV being fantastic, good looking photographs, you had great dynamic range, great low light experience as well. And this is, I think, was the most biggest difference between a Fujifilm X-T3 and a Sony Alpha 7 Mark IV. For my personal use case scenario, the low light capabilities, having a bit of better low light capabilities because of a full frame sensor compared to the APS-C sensor from a Fujifilm X-T3. Also the dynamic range from a Sony Alpha 7 Mark IV compared to the Fujifilm X-T3 was obviously slightly better. When it comes down to photography, I wouldn't have needed to buy the Sony Alpha 7 Mark IV. I got fantastic images out of my Fujifilm X-T3. The reason why I upgraded is basically for the S-Log and the video capabilities of the Sony Alpha 7 Mark IV. And I know, hold on, let me explain. Fujifilm nowadays got the better and higher specs when it comes down to video compared to the Sony Alpha 7 Mark IV. The X-H2S 6.2 gate open gate, 40 megapixel in photo. So basically the Fujifilm offers more than a Sony Alpha 7 Mark IV offers when it comes down to specs. The reason why I bought the Sony Alpha 7 Mark IV is I compared the F-Log to the S-Log. I always did struggle a bit to color grade the F-Log to the point where I was happy with the quality and the result I got, got out of my video. After I did play around with the S-Log a bit and the S-Log was so much easier to color grade for my personal way how I work. And also the Sony is so much more integrated into programs such as like DaVinci Resolve and other programs. I found the S-Log would make more sense for myself to create the videos I want to create for the coloring process and overall speeding my workflow up with the Sony Alpha 7 Mark IV. So overall speaking, the Sony done very well over the last 12 months. I barely had any issues with the Sony Alpha 7 Mark IV at all. It didn't overheat to the point that it needed to shut down. The battery life was alright after updating a firmware twice to the newest firmware because at the beginning the battery drained in a camera body and I didn't understand why and understood why. So upgrade, upgrading the firmware twice, this problem was fixed as well. Having a reliable autofocus right now for video is fantastic and good to have. Having the S-Log compared to the F-Log, that's personal preference. I prefer the S-Log when it comes down to video because it makes my workflow a bit easier and the video is actually looking how I would like to have them. Overall speaking, we're comparing apples to oranges here nowadays. Purely photography related, as mentioned already, I wouldn't have needed to upgrade to the Sony Alpha 7 Mark IV. I was more than happy with my Fujifilm. However, when it comes down to video, having a bit more flexibility, having more accessories available, having the S-Log, Suji, uh, Suji. Sony is more integrated into programs. It overall made my life a bit easier and faster when it comes down to the process of creating my videos. So with that said, I hope you liked this video guys and it gave you a bit of different understanding of two different brands, how I approached the situation and overall, yeah, it just gave you a bit of a different in-depth when it comes down to two different cameras or the Sony Alpha 7 Mark IV. And with that said, take care and I'm going to see you in the next one.